Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic, our last quarterfinal and wrapping up day one from Honolulu, just off the shores of Waikiki Beach. It's number six, unbeaten Miami against the home team, the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors in the Stan Sheriff Center. And the winner of this game will play New Mexico State, who just hung on for a one-point win over Davidson earlier today in a thriller middle Tennessee. Beat Princeton and USC, a strong second half pulled away from Akron. And this is quarterfinal number four and the home floor for Hawaii at the Stan Sheriff Center along with Corey Alexander. Roxy Bernstein with you. How critical is the home court going to be tonight? It's very critical, Roxy. You were calling a game two years ago. I was in the stands watching as this Hawaii team took on a top five ranked Oklahoma. And I thought they had pulled it off, but this crowd was amazing. I expect for them to be the same here tonight. And there's a crowd of about eight to 9,000 on hand. Here in Honolulu is Aran Ganat in his third year, the head coach of Hawaii, who was the 2016 Big West Coach of the Year when he led the Rainbow Warriors to a school record 28 wins in the second round of the NCAA tournament. He's done a masterful job here in Honolulu since taking over the job. On the other side for Miami, Jim Laranega, the veteran, his seventh year at the U. Overall, 34 seasons. And if this is not his best team, it's one of his best teams. And Jim Laranega, who's already been to the Final Four in 2006 with George Mason, feels like this team has a chance to be that good. Could this be his most talented team? I believe it is his most talented team. We don't know if it's his best team or not. He's normally had older teams, but when it comes to talent, he's never coached a team like this. Well, the environment is terrific for this matchup between one of four remaining unbeaten teams in college basketball. Miami against the home team and off the tip it's controlled by the Rainbow Warriors. Hawaii comes in at seven and two in a season best three game winning streak. Fifth year senior Mike Thomas and it's taken away and stolen by Dewan Hewell in Miami. And that's the one thing you don't want to do against the Hurricanes is give them extra opportunities. But this Miami team is as good as it gets defensively. One of the top teams in scoring defense as well as field goal percentage defense in the country. Shot clock at 10. Jaquan Newton on the drive. Down the lane, falls off, rebound, Hawaii and Gibson Johnson, and a foul against the Canes. And it's on Jaquan Newton. But you alluded to their defense for Miami. They're second in the country to your alma mater in scoring defense, Virginia. Second in defensive field goal percentage to Michigan State. Second in defensive three-point percentage to the University of San Diego. And the rebound cleared by Hewell in Miami. And they have the 11th best scoring margin in college basketball. Yeah, averaging, winning over 20 points per game. The and floater their, by Anthony Lawrence. In their 9-0 start to this season. And haven't played a great schedule. Do have a very good win at Minnesota. But I'm sure that Coach Laranega is looking to see how his team responds here in this tournament. But more importantly here in what is a true road game against the Rainbow Warriors. Leland Green answers for Hawaii. Juan Newton for the U. To the basket, Newton. And Jaquan Newton with very good size for a point guard does most of his damage in the paint has shot the three a little more this year than he has in the past but he loves to attack the paint and a lone scholarship senior for Miami as Leland Green can't handle the pass and that's a second giveaway by the Bows. But Ron Gannott he wanted this challenge he preparing his team he was quoted as saying you only get one life. Our guys live for challenges. They'll be prepared. They'll be ready. And he wasn't the only coach in this game that wanted this challenge. Jim Laranega said he wanted a true role game, but wanted to be a part of this tournament. The second time that Miami has played in the Diamond Head Classic, 
So he wanted this game to be able to play against Miami on their I'm sorry, against Hawaii on their home court in this in this environment. Fallon Michael Thomas of Hawaii is Jim Laranaga. One of four remaining unbeaten teams along with Villanova and then a couple of surprises in Arizona State who won again today and TCU. It's and really Jamie Dixon, a former Hawaii assistant coach, actually. Yeah, and, and again, it's really not much of a surprise for Miami considering the schedule that they played, as well as this was a team that was highly tiled at their highest preseason ranking at number 13 nationally coming into the season this year. One Huel for the U. Jack Purchase, a transfer from Auburn, is in for the Rainbow Warriors. Starting five for Miami. Drew Bugs from the corner. And the rebound cleared by DJ Vasilovic in Miami. Huel inside for Miami. And a beautiful pass there from Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown is probably the best player in the country that many people have not heard about. Two triple doubles already in his young Miami career. And one of the top shooting guard prospects for the NBA draft this coming season. Jack Purchase is struggling shooting the ball, missing the three. Miami's made four of their first five shots. And they're getting good looks. Jaquan Newton, the reverse. And a timeout for Hawaii as it's Miami out to a 10-2 lead. We talked about Jaquan Newton and his ability to attack the paint. And what he feels is a, he's a big guard and he knows how to finish whenever he finds himself amongst the trees. Exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines. Hawaii flies with us. Outrigger Hotels and Resorts, Escape Ordinary, and Gildan, your go-to brand for t-shirts and underwear. Along with former Virginia All-American NBA guard Corey Alexander, Roxy Bernstein with you, and Miami's taking the crowd out of this. They're off to a good start. They really have, and they've gotten their damage done in the paint. Jaquan Newton already with two buckets, Dewan Huell two buckets, and Miami is operating the way that they want to get it done offensively. We talked about Newton and attacking the paint. He likes to use his size over top of much smaller guards, and then Dewan Huell off the beautiful feed from Bruce Brown. And Huell, the leading scorer for Miami, but they have a very balanced attack this season. Along with a suffocating defense. <laughs> oh, yeah, and that too. Sharif Dreme, the reigning Big West Player of the Week. And it's knocked out of bounds by Dewan Huell. It stays with Hawaii in 13 to shoot. First appearance for Lonnie Walker, the fourth, the McDonald's All-American. The freshman checks in for Miami, who's really been playing well here the last few games. Yeah, 17 points a game over his last three, and got an opportunity to start a game that Bruce Brown missed versus Boston University at 26 points in that game for Lonnie Walker. Sharif Dremay hits a three in the... Stockholm Sweden product and Jermaine is one of the very few guys that coach cannot can depend on to knock down three pointers thus far this season. People have not made many against Miami this year. Shot clock at 10. Bruce Brown. Well defended by Gibson Johnson. Great defensive stance there by Hawaii. Now in transition, you'd like to see them get a bucket and get this crowd into the game. Give the crowd credit for showing up here for the Rainbow Warriors. And you want to make sure you give them the type of response by playing well in front of them. Deep three from Purchase. And it goes over the top of the backboard, hits the shot. They were ready to erupt, though, as soon as that they wanted shot to. went up. But Sharif Jermay doing a very good job finding his spot and then knocking down the corner three ball. Miami off to their best start since they began the 2007-08 season 12 and 0. 
And if they win this tournament, they'll match that start coming into the field at 9-0. Rattles out. Gibson Johnson clears for the Bows. Gibson Johnson can't handle it. Loose ball. Diving forward is Walker. Loose picked up by Hawaii. Gibson Johnson by himself. And the senior from Centerville, Utah, suburb of Salt Lake City. It's five straight for Hawaii. The floater short from Juan Huell. And it's amazing the way as the crowd gets into this game, a couple of hustle plays and how that can build the momentum in your, in your favor. For Hawaii, another opportunity here to put points on the board, a three to tie, could tie, possibly tie the game. Redshirt freshman Drew Bugs missed last year with a knee injury. Loose five to shoot. Leland Green, kick out. Dreme, desperation three. And here comes Miami and Anthony Lawrence. Lawrence, coast to coast, gets the roll. And again, Miami with that stingy defense, not giving Hawaii a good look, even as the shot clock goes down, continuing to defend through the 30 seconds of the shot clock. Hawaii 7-1 and one here at home. Their only loss was to Nevada. And 7-2 and two overall. Their only road game was a loss in Salt Lake City to Utah and Larry Kraskovia. Leland Green, foul on the drive. It's on Bruce Brown, Jr. of Miami. But one thing on your home court, you have got to provide the hustle. And Hawaii doing that, what well, should have been a turnover, comes up to be a basket for, as I like to call the Rainbow Warriors, you call them the Bows. <laughs> but I like the Rainbow Warrior name. Off the inbound, Drew Bugs. Off the bench, Brock step toe, hits a three. And the walk on, the junior from Dallas pulls Hawaii within two. And step toe averaging 9.1 points per game. So he's not a young man that's coming off the bench to be passive. He's coming in fire. Also in for the Rainbow Warriors, Edo Fleischer, a sophomore from Israel. And a foul against Hawaii. And it's on Brock step toe. Steptoe not used to playing against guys who may be smaller than him, but having opportunity to go up against Chris Likes. And if this is your first time seeing Chris Likes, he is a special talent. I mean, he's a young man that plays much larger than his stature and an excellent score as a freshman for the Hurricanes. You were giving him grief about his glasses yesterday. Well, I, he, he's wearing glasses. This is new. I've been watching Chris since he was 14 years old. And he's wearing glasses, so he has to wear them to protect his contacts. But he's out here shooting shots from you know, half court without his glasses on. I'm like, if you're going to shoot those shots, put your glasses on. Take game shots. You've heard that before, Roxy. <laughs> Here's Steptoe. Lost the handle. Got it back. Three. Got it. Drew Bugs and Hawaii he has the lead. Does Jack Purchase get an assist? If he tried to do that, then it's an assist. And Jack Purchase leads Hawaii in assists, so I'm going to give him credit for the beautiful behind-the-back pass. Six straight for the Rainbow Warriors. And the crowd is a factor here. Loose, diving for it. And a tie-up. It belongs to the U. And nine to shoot for Miami. Six straight for the Bows and Corey. Hawaii has the lead. Jim Larinaga said he wanted a, a true road game. Well, he got it right here. The environment is great. And oh yeah, Jack Purchase, a great behind the back pass off of the loose ball feed. Purchase finding his man in the corner, dropping dimes. Bugs with the three. Warriors right now after getting down 10-2 on an 11-2 run and lead number six undefeated Miami quarterfinals of the Hawaiian Airlines 
Diamond Head Classic. And it's going to be a challenge for the offense for the Bows tonight, Corey, going up against one of the top defenses in college basketball. It really is. And when you look at the offense this season, that 28% three-point field goal percentage has to come up in this game if you want to have a chance against the U. And it has thus far. Knocking down three threes early in this one. And Hawaii is going to have to continue to do this early and often in this game. So Ron Gannat's team clinging to a one-point lead, attacking for the U. And they're playing above the rim but can't cash in. Chris Likes finally puts it in after three or four chances for the Canes. Yeah, and that's one of the areas that Hawaii can't continue to give up multiple opportunities to Miami on the glass and there is a definite advantage in size for the Canes. Jack Purchase tries it again. Fourth three for Hawaii. Here's Likes and a travel against the Miami freshman. Jack Purchase is the young man that Hawaii feels as though they need for him to get going, playing every, playing well in every aspect other than, other than his shooting so far this year. But he's a capable scorer, and they need his points. Back door, Jermaine drops it off, the slam from Edo Fleischer. Vasilovic missing the floater, got his own miss, can't get the putback. Underneath, physical play won't go for Azundu. And we're going the other way. Point blank chances for Miami. Ibuka Azundu called for the foul. Beautiful ball movement by Hawaii. Purchase, we talked about his passing earlier. But it's not just purchases, they continue to find the open man and the beautiful dump off for the two-hand dunk. Midway through the first half. Hawaii weathered the early storm for Miami. An errant pass thrown away by Samuta Avea and a turnover by the Rainbow Warriors. I think Jim Laranango will break out the turnover chain? Uh, no, because if the turnover <laughs> chain comes out, it's not in their favor. <laughs> he will not be breaking out. Any. Coach L is a very hip, trendy coach, but I don't think we're going to see the turnover chain. Tough three from the corner missed by DJ Vasilovic. Steal. Anthony Lawrence to Bruce Brown. Drops it off to Lawrence who draws the foul and gets the basket. And again, you just see another example of how well Bruce Brown passes the basketball, but it starts on the defensive end of the floor for Miami. Amp Lawrence coming up with the steal and then is rewarded on the other end of the floor by the beautiful feed from Bruce Brown. Lawrence only a 58% foul shooter. That's one area where Miami really struggles, is foul shooting. The Canes, they rank 350th in college basketball in free throw shooting. There's only one team in college basketball that's worse than Miami in shooting free throws. That's Boston University. And that's, that's hard to see when you think about a team that's as good as Miami is. Their BPI rating of 13, of course, reflects the fact that they're the number six team in the country. But their strength of schedule is part of the reason why it has them at 35 in their RPI. Lawrence, the finish. That's the way you quiet a crowd, Amp Lawrence. <laughs> I would say we should look at it 
on Sports Center for a top ten, but we're already tomorrow. Yeah, I'm about to say that's so tomorrow maybe night tomorrow Sports Center. Yeah. Sports Center. <laughs> so many more highlights to come before then. A block called against Lawrence as Mike Thomas on the drive. And two shots for Michael Thomas, the fifth year senior from Woodland Hills in Southern California. Anthony, aka Amp Lawrence, going baseline and the finish. At the rim, we're going to give it a Sports Center top 10 nominee, regardless as to whether it's after 1 o'clock on the East Coast. For the morning Sports Center, maybe? Oh, I like that. I like that. We can get some morning Sports Center love. For you sure. and I won't be awake no. to see it, but. No. <laughs> Thomas is 75% foul shooter. He sat out last year, he redshirted after undergoing wrist surgery. And he's the only starter remaining from the 2016 Hawaii team that went to the second round of the NCAA tournament. And referred to really as the heart and soul of this Hawaii group. Makes the tough plays and gets it done in the trenches. And a foul called against Samuta Avea of Hawaii, his first. It is the bowl season. We've got three more for you today on ESPN. Noon Eastern, Texas Tech takes on South Florida, the Birmingham Bowl. Then at 3.30, San Diego State and Army in the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl. Wrap it up at 7 Eastern, App State and Toledo. Go at it. All three games are available on the ESPN app. Of course, we've got a bowl game here on Christmas Eve. The Hawaii Bowl between Houston and Fresno State. I haven't seen Houston nor Fresno State play this year, but knowing those two programs, I'm expecting a high-scoring affair between them. What a dramatic turnaround by Jeff Tedford in his first year at his alma mater, Fresno State. The former California head coach did a spectacular job with Fresno State this year. As a foul called against Brock Steptoe of Hawaii, his second. But we're tied at 19 quarterfinals in Honolulu. Number six, Miami, and the home team, Hawaii. We're tied at 19 here in Honolulu between Miami and Hawaii and Anthony Lawrence has had a strong start for the U. And Jim Laranega has so much talent on the perimeter that he had to move Amp Lawrence to the four position and it's worked out well for the juniors. He continues to excel in the season, getting out in transition. And this is a young man that can play, make moves with the basketball in his hands, can knock down jumpers, and of course, can finish at the rim. 14 of the 19 from Miami have come in the paint. Lawrence stepping out, three rattles out, and Michael Thomas elevates for the rebound. And you see Thomas on the interior. Thomas can rebound with Miami. He may be the only one of the Rainbow Warriors as they come up with another turnover. Gibson Johnson took it back, and then Thomas called for a charge. Second foul on Michael Thomas. And Thomas, as I was talking about, he has the athleticism to compete with Miami on the boards. But now going to the bench with his second foul puts more pressure on Jack Purchase to be able to come in and have success against the Canes as we see Thomas. You know, I'll be honest with you, I'm not saying that's a bad call because it probably is. That wasn't a charge when I was playing basketball. And the, the game has changed that much. You had to take it square in the test for it to be a charge 25 years ago. Nowadays, all you got to do is take a little contact and fall down. It's not a bad call on the officials. They're doing their job. That's just the way the game is called now. Bruce Brown missing a three, and the rebound cleared by the Rainbow Warriors. Tied at 19, 640 left first half. Miami, one of four remaining unbeaten teams in college basketball. Ten to shoot. Inside to Johnson. Gibson Johnson to the basket. Loose. Picked up by the U. Here comes Bruce Brown. 
Hewell runs the floor and drops it in. And you see when Bruce Brown gets the basketball in transition, when your bigs run that way, that means that they're expecting to get the basketball, and they know that Bruce Brown will find them a very good playmaker with the ball in his hands. Jack Purchase, second three for the Auburn transfer. The Aussie native gives Hawaii the lead again. Five threes for the Bows in this one. And before the game, when asked, what does Hawaii have to do to compete with Miami in this game? The first thing I said, make a bunch of threes. And that loosens up the defense for this Miami team. Jack Purchase gets the rebound. Hawaii is 5 of 11 from three. Purchase again. And a foul. It's on Gibson Johnson going for the rebound. New Year's Day will have college football playoff semifinals on ESPN. Number three, Georgia. Number two, Oklahoma. Kick things off in the Rose Bowl game at 5 Eastern to Pacific from Pasadena. Then it's number four, Alabama, and number one, Clemson, the All-State Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans. It's all coming up New Year's Day. So Baker Mayfield against the top dogs in the SEC. And then Bama squeezing in. Take on Clemson in a rematch of last year's championship game is Jaquan Newton. Was there Miami in the bonus? Was there ever a doubt that Alabama was getting in in your mind? Yeah, there was actually. There was. Never one in mind. Looking at the best teams in the country, we talked about Miami still undefeated at nine and zero. But how about Arizona State? Bobby Hurley's group getting the job done. Jamie Dixon doing a great job in his second year at TCU. ASU's played a tough schedule. They won at Fog Allen against Kansas. They beat Xavier on a neutral floor and Kansas State on a neutral floor. They beat Vanderbilt. When I saw the Kansas game on the schedule. Travel against Ito Fleischer. That Arizona State was going to play against Kansas. The first thing I thought of was Sam Cundiff leaving Arizona State midway through the year and he wasn't eligible to play yet for Kansas. That was the last game that he was not eligible. But I know that's a game that Bobby Hurley, I've been around Bobby Hurley for a long time. I know that's a game that he had circled on his calendar and his players went out and put on a phenomenal performance in that one to get a win in one of the toughest places in the country to play. Seven to shoot. Jaquan Newton lines up a three. And the rebound, Jack Purchase. Seven rebounds already for Purchase. And we've talked about Purchase has done everything well this season except for shoot the basketball. He's their leader in assists and block shots. And he talked about his rebounding today. The block by Dewan Hewell. Lonnie Walker rattles in the three. Oh, and a and technical, technical foul. on Walker. So Walker hits the three and then gets the tee. Well, he's wondering, what did I do? Well, regardless as to what it was he did, he did it. Because he did it right in front of the official. <laughs> right on top of with the call. First three for the Canes. And Walker my, gets it, but then he gets the tee. And he uses every part of the rim to get the first three for the Canes, but whatever he had to say on his way back to the bench. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And one a day men's and women's. We've opened up a four-point lead here late in the first half. Lonnie Walker hitting the first three for Miami, but then after the three, he was called for an unsportsmanlike technical foul. He said something and stared down the Hawaii bench after he made the three. And Keith Kimball right there on the call, but what I do like coming out of the huddle, 
Out of the timeout, Monty Walker immediately goes over to Keith Kimball. The two share a couple words, pat each other on the back, and move on. And I like the fact that Jim Laranega also is leaving Monty Walker in the game, not going back to – Coach L has some old-school ways about him, but back in the day, that would be immediately you're coming to sit down. But Coach L not taking Lonnie Walker out of the game, keeping him on the floor, giving him an opportunity to atone for his mistake. Sharif Dremay shooting the technical free throw, 78%. Is Jim Laranega's team getting a challenge here from Hawaii out of the Big West Conference? Here in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic, a true road game for the Canes as Dremay hits both. It also goes as a personal against Walker, his first. And... The point of interruption was after the made shot, so Hawaii gets the ball. Here's Dremay. Across the key, Sharif Dremay in one. That was impressive. Very impressive, especially considering He's going against a very good defensive guard in Bruce Brown. And you see the size advantage that Brown has over Jermay, but Jermay taking the contact at the rim and finishing with the concentration and an opportunity to give the lead back to Hawaii. Second foul on Brown and Jermay, who was the reigning Big West Player of the Week, playing with a lot of confidence. Coming up a career high 20 in their win last Sunday against Utah Valley. And Dremay gets the old school three point play and gives the Bulls the lead again. And Brown, as you mentioned, that second foul taking a seat. And he's really the guy that makes this Miami offense run because of his ability to make plays with the, and getting the ball to his teammates. And one for Lonnie Walker. The McDonald's All American. It's our ninth lead change. And Lonnie Walker, six foot five, tremendous athlete, but also the ability to shoot and score in the paint. This time, nothing to say after the finish, just calmly going to the free throw line. Second foul on Jack Purchase. And Walker hits the free throw for a team that's just a 57% foul shooting team. They're four four at the line. You know, I would honestly have to think hard. And there are a lot of very good teams, and, and of course, teams that have a bunch of good guards. I'm not sure if there's anyone in the country that has five guards as good as the Miami guards. Villanova comes to mind as one of those teams you have to think about. But outside of that, the talent on the perimeter for Miami is substantial. Tied at 29, Dremay has 10 to lead all scores. Lonnie Walker from deep and the rebound Jack Purchase to the Rainbow Warriors. Inside Edo Fleischer underneath swatted from behind by Anthony Lawrence. The annual NBA on Christmas Day tradition continues for the best gifts anyone could ask for at noon. Eastern it's the Sixers and Knicks. On ESPN, then at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific on ABC, a rematch of the NBA Finals, the Cavs and the Warriors. At 5.30, the Wizards score off against the Celtics, and in the finale, it's the Rockets and the Thunder in OKC. All four games also available on the ESPN app. Michael Thomas comes back in with his two fouls. Drew Buggs from the corner. Air balls a three and it falls right to Anthony Lawrence. Loose ball. Hawaii comes away with it and Leland Green ahead to Michael Thomas who can't handle the pass. A number of missed opportunities for Hawaii. That one there, an opportunity to give them the lead. Their best athlete at Michael Thomas getting out what should be surely a dunk. Just come away with the empty possession off of the Miami turnover. Eight turnovers for the Bows.
Chris likes the step back. Well short of the three. We talked about missed opportunities. The great find. And Thomas just takes his eyes off the basketball. Probably thinking more about the finish. And a foul call and Jim Laranaga is beside himself. And that's one where Coach Laranaga has a good case. It looked like Chris Likes got that one clean. First on Likes. Drew Bugs to the line. Here's a look. And that's a play where, as a point guard, you cannot turn your back. And more importantly, when you spin, you better take the ball with you, or you may as well give it away to the opponent. And as my man Sheed would say, I know Sheed is up after 1 o'clock at home. Ball don't lie. <laughs> Bugs missing the first of the one and one. Oh, the likes didn't look at, he had the opposite hand, the left hand oh, wrapped around. See, him. that's you trying I, to I, give the advantage I away. I just can see it. Oh, my goodness. Ibuka Zundu. Uh -oh. Oh, okay, so I don't care what sports center it is, that should be on there. And a foul on Lawrence who doesn't like it. Amp Lawrence duck was nice, <laughs> but this is a sports center top 10 nominee. Ebuka Izundu with the hammer for the finish. Poor Michael Thomas. It's been a tough evening so far for Michael Thomas. I know he can't wait for this first half to be over to go hit the reset button and come in for the second half. Try to delete that last highlight. Too. Oh, ain't no deleting that one. It's going to be all over TV for the next week. Drew Bugs hits the first. And we are tied at 31. Just over a minute to go first half. Quarterfinals of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. The winner will play New Mexico State, who squeaked one out against Davidson earlier tonight. Or last night, depending on where you're at. <laughs> DeWan Huell, the miss, tipped out of bounds, off of Hawaii, and it's the ball to Miami. And Gibson Johnson now having to be held back. Yeah, he thought it was off of Miami. And I think Gibson Johnson had a case, but ooh. Jo yeah, Johnson yep. has a great case. That should be going. Seemed like Azundu was the last one to yeah, touch Yeah, Azundu definitely hit it out. And Johnson was on the inside. It wasn't even close. Likes drives. Off balance. Chris Likes with the bucket. Drew Bugs. And a tie-up, but first a timeout. Hawaii got the timeout before Miami was able to tie him up. And with 16.1 remaining in the half, the Bows get a last crack at it. Sixteen point one left in the half and Corey it's a two-point game Hawaii is hanging right with number six undefeated Miami Hawaii is right there and if, if of course if I'm coaching or not right now you want to take the last shot and give yourself maybe a chance for offensive rebound but the way that Jack Purchase has played this first half I would like to see them run something to see if they can get buzz coming off a screen and roll attacking the paint but more importantly being able to find purchase for open three to end the half Here's Sharif Dramay. Steps into a three. Got it! Hawaii with the lead. Halftime in Honolulu. And the Rainbow Warriors lead. Unbeaten number six, Miami, 34-33. They're right now saying it was a two, but it appeared he was behind the line. And Jermaine, you yep. see that right foot come across the line on the shot. Good call. People will call that a bad shot. I disagree. If it goes in, it's a great <laughs> shot. So a late bucket by Sharif Jermaine, the reigning Big West Player of the Week. And we are tied at halftime. 
between the home team, the Rainbow Warriors, and undefeated number six, Miami. Halftime festivities straight ahead from Honolulu. The Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic, the ninth annual tournament in Honolulu, hosted by the University of Hawaii. As all festive here on Waikiki, and this building is festive as well with the bows hanging with unbeaten number six Miami in a 33-33 ball game. And the, only, and the second time this season that Miami has been tied at the half, and Miami has not trailed in a second half all season long. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Rainbow Warriors come out here in the second half and the type of energy coaches always talk about the first five minutes of the second half. Well, coming into tonight, Miami had only trailed for a total of 24 minutes, 32 seconds in their first nine games and all in the first half, which you alluded to. Hawaii led for almost four minutes of the first half. Miami led for about nine and a half minutes of the first half. And for six and a half minutes, this game was tied in the first half. It's been a tight ball game. Miami jumped out early. Hawaii came back, and it's been back and forth ever since. And give Hawaii a lot of credit for their response, especially when Miami came out with a 10-2 lead and dunking and attacking the paint, this, that, and other. But the response from Hawaii really showed a lot of character for those young men coming in and getting back into the game. Ninth turnover for the Rainbow Warriors tonight. Hawaii 13 and 11 all time in this tournament. Their best finish, a couple of times they finished in third place. They've never won this event. And a foul from behind, it'll be on Gibson Johnson sending Dewan Hewell to the line, the second on Johnson. You know, there's a discrepancy between the measurements on the mainland compared to here in the islands. <laughs> because Gibson Johnson is listed as how tall? 6'9? Six 6'8. Six it's listed as 6'8. Okay. Dewan Hewell was listed at 6'10? 6'11. Okay. I I'll give that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. You're still hung up on Eli Chua from <laughs> New Mexico State, aren't you? Maybe that's it. Because Huell is, and even that's wrong, Huell is at least four inches taller. <laughs> but, you know, I heard someone in the back, one of the, uh, the uh, Hawaii fans saying, their bigs are a lot bigger than our bigs. <laughs> and there's a definite size discrepancy. A three for Leland Green, and for the first time this season, Miami trails in the second half of a game. But one area where size does not matter is beyond that, that three-point arc, and that's really where Hawaii has played a huge part in taking control of this game. And a travel against Jaquan Newton. And right now you're seeing Miami truly dealing with the effects of playing a true road game. You see these games normally when you see a holiday tournament and the gyms aren't full and they're not really in rooting for one team in particular. But there is a vested interest in the building here tonight. Third foul on Anthony Lawrence. And also take into account, right now, it's 2.24 in the morning in Miami. <laughs> but then again, it is Miami. It's a town that I was about to say, and people don't sleep. They're college students. None of these guys are asleep at 2.24 a.m. Tend to shoot. Sharif Drame, tough three. And the rebound controlled by Dayan Vasilovich. Now, not that Drame was taking a hero shot, but one thing that Hawaii can't get caught up in is one person trying to get it done. They need to stick with the ball movement and playing the way they played in the first half, sharing the basketball and finding the best shot for the team. The one Huell gives the Canes the lead again. And he's often the best shot for the Canes, getting the ball in deep to Huell and allowing him to be able to operate. Dropping it off to Gibson Johnson. The reverse lay-in by the second oldest player in college basketball. 
And that was a that was a 40 and over league move right there by Josh. <laughs> he didn't jump much. He didn't get off the ground very high. Josh Boutte of Sam Houston State is the only player older in the country. And Michael Thomas has just been whistled for his third. And Thomas just has to recognize where he is on that play. He's inside the restricted area. As we see Gibson Johnson. I think I may jump higher than that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, the two points is all that matters for Johnson. Two shots for Bruce Brown, who is only eight of 18 from the line this season. And it's amazing that a guy as skilled as Brown, who shoots the ball, handles the ball, I mean, just all around a very good basketball player, how poorly he's shooting free throws this season. Miami is a team in general is shooting embarrassingly bad from the free throw line. But Brown, not even yet at 50%. One out of two, we're tied at 38. Jack Purchase in for Thomas, who sits with the three fouls. Or technically, he's actually standing beyond the end of the bench. But that hasn't been a bad substitution tonight for Coach Gannott, because Purchase has given them great minutes. Drew Bugs and a foul going for the rebound. That's three on Gibson Johnson. And Aron Gannat has some foul trouble with his bigs. Three on Johnson, three on Thomas. And Ido Fleischer coming in. 6'10 sophomore from Herzliya, Israel. And, and Fleischer gave Hawaii good minutes in the first half, but you know, when it gets down to crunch time, I'm not sure Coach Gennad wants to have to de depend on Fleischer in the post. This is a time I'm sure he'd much rather have Johnson or Thomas on the floor alongside Purchase. Newton, tough shot, got it. That was well defended by Leland Green, just great offense from Jaquan Newton. Reflected out by DJ Vasilovic. When you see how the, you talked about the adjustment for Miami, now you see anytime Jack Purchase is involved in a screen, they're just switching the screen. Inviting Purchase to go ahead and try to take them to the post, if that's going to be the case, but they don't want him getting any easy looks on the perimeter. Jim Laranega, a great coach, and even more so a great defensive coach, making that adjustment at halftime. Fleischer inside. Kind of slipped out of his hand as he was going up. Vasilovic steps into a three, and Miami's up five. And that is the one guy, when you're playing against the Hurricanes, you cannot let this DJ Vasilovic find open looks because he is shooting lights out this season. Six straight for the Canes. They led by as many as eight in the first half. This is their largest lead of the second half. Sharif Dremay to the basket. And a foul against Dewan Hewell will put Dremay at the line for the Rainbow Warriors. Miami up five quarterfinals of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And one a day men's and women's. Get New Mexico State tomorrow night or later tonight, depending on where you're at, in the semifinals of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Middle Tennessee will square off against USC in the other semifinal in Honolulu. Ninth annual Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic is Dusty Baker is here tonight. Manager, longtime National League manager with the Giants, Cubs. Reds, Nationals, Sharif Tremay hits the first. Did a and tremendous job, did a tremendous job with the Nationals, and they didn't renew his contract, which, you know, I live close to the D.C. area. There's a lot of people over there not very happy about that. I'm a big Dusty guy. I'm, I'm a huge Dusty fan as well, although I'm a Yankee fan. I mean, I, I can root for the Nats because they're in the National League, but, you know, until they get to the World Series, play against my Yankees, that's a different world. 
baseline and dunking it is Dewan Hewell, who has 12 to lead the Canes. But why did no one contest that? I that, that mean, again, when you have a guy that good getting the ball that close, there's no way he should be able to get to the rim that easy. Too strong on the bank attempt from Leland Green as the Canes are 4 4 from the floor in the second half. And a three knocked in by Bruce Brown, and Miami's got it going now. And when you watch that and you see how good looking Bruce Brown's shot is, how's that guy not shooting 50% from the free throw line? You got me. I'm sure that's a question Jim Laranega asks all the time. Sharif Dreme, 15 for the Rainbow Warriors. And you mentioned earlier, Dreme is playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. And early into the season, it looks like he's really starting to become that go-to guy, especially for perimeter players on this, this Hawaii team. Shot clock inside 10. Jaquan Newton. Fade away. And the rebound. Loose. Jack Purchase saves it, but Miami picks it up. That's another one of those missed opportunities for Hawaii. And it normally ends up turning into a three on the other end. Stolen by Jermay off the deflection from Leland Green. Great defensive stance there because DJ Vasilovich was open in the corner. Great recognition by Jermay to take that one away. Shot clock inside 10. Leland Green, corner three. Seven threes for the Rainbow Warriors. And Hawaii is back within four. Strong finish by Jaquan Newton. And you see Jaquan Newton continuing to attack the paint. Play game warning to Miami. It is the full season. We've got three more for you today on ESPN at Noon Eastern, Texas Tech, and South Florida in the Birmingham Bowl. Then at 3.30, San Diego State and Army in the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl. And the nightcap, Appalachian State and Toledo in the Dollar General Bowl. That's at 7 Eastern. All three games are available on the ESPN app. Mike Thomas back into the game. Can't handle the pass from Brock Steptoe. There is Vasilovich knocking it down. And he is shooting lights out on the season so far. And now Chris likes applying the pressure in the full court. And that's one of the things talking to assistant coach Jamal Brunt from Miami. He talked about Chris likes being able to take advantage of what could be considered a disadvantage in his size as DJ Vasilovich gets an opportunity to knock down another three pointer and does. But talking about likes and being a pest in the full court. And Chris Lice has been so good offensively his whole life. He really hasn't had to rely on his defense. But at this level, he can become a game changer defensively. And you just saw an example of that in the full court. Career high 10 rebounds now from Jack Purchase as Michael Thomas gets it back after trying to go up against a Zundu. Purchase from deep. And the rebound falls to Chris Likes. And he's bumped by Brock Steptoe. Inside 12 minutes to go in Miami. It's matched their largest lead of the night. The undefeated Canes up nine on the Rainbow Warriors. Briefly here in the second half, the first time they've trailed the second half of the game as Hawaii finds a three-point shooting. Leland Green stepping up and knocking down not one but two three-pointers here in the second half and giving the Rainbow Warriors a huge lift. But I believe by Miami falling behind, it woke up the Canes and it did in a flurry. 
Bruce Brown knocking down the three. DJ Vasilovich finding the corner three ball. And Miami has started to flex his muscle here in the second half. Canes are 7 of 9 for the floor in the second half. Now make it 8 of 10 as Azundu inside. And Miami also has made all three of their threes. You know, and you see Azundu coming in and spelling Dewan Hewell. These two guys actually played together in the front court a year ago. Hewell was really more of a power forward. This year, Jim Larinaga, without much depth in the front court, playing those two guys both primarily at the five position and splitting minutes. But there will be occasions when they play bigger teams that he will have both those guys on the court at the same time. And that's a, a pretty big front court for the Kings. Largest lead for the U. Vasilovic steps in. Rattles out, rebound Jack Purchase. 11 boards now for Purchase. Green, way off on that three. Loose ball, Leland Green had taken away. Bruce Brown ahead to Walker running the floor. Now that was a mistake by Bruce Brown. Even though the pass was completed and Lonnie Walker was able to finish it, if Bruce Brown would have thrown that up into the air, we would have had Sports Center highlight number three because Lonnie Walker is a highlight film of his own. Nine nothing run for the Miami Hurricanes who are trying to remain unbeaten. Getting out in the fast break, Bruce Brown with the great vision. Throw it up, Bruce. I want to see Lonnie put it down. Nothing run for Jim Laranaga and the Miami Hurricanes. They're up 13, their largest lead of the night. And their defense is starting to settle in, and they're getting their offense going here in the second half. Yeah, they really have. And when you look at the way that they get it done, it's a very balanced scoring attack for Miami. Five players averaging 10 plus per game, eight players averaging over five points per game, and then they're shooting from the field and three point shooting. They're a very efficient team. And when you throw into account eight, making eight and a half threes a game, it makes this Miami team dangerous. And speaking of dangerous, Jack Purchase has been dangerously hot from beyond the arc tonight. Three threes for Purchase. And that's a 10 point game. Hawaii's made eight threes tonight. Chris Likes answers for the U. You know, I'll give you a, a hoop scoop on Chris Likes, which I did. We didn't. I should have told our producers beforehand. Chris Likes as a, a foul and Drew Bugs. as a junior at Gonzaga High School in D.C. As you see, Chris had opportunity and you see what he does so well. You see most guys at his size that come in at great defenders, you know, pass first point guard, et cetera. This young man is a scorer. It doesn't matter. He doesn't have to be close to the line. He's a flat-out scorer. As a junior at Gonzaga High School, he beat out a young man I'm sure you're very familiar with for the WCAC Player of the Year. The young man that he beat out was the number one pick in the NBA draft last year, one Markel Fultz. Chris Likes had a better year that year than Markel Fultz did as a senior. Chris Likes as a junior. That's how special this young man was. I've always thought that he's been one of the most underrated players that I've seen, especially at the high school level when they talked about his ranking. He's five foot five. If he were six feet or six five, he would have been a top five player in the country with his production. He didn't have to do anything different. Just what he did, if he was a foot taller, he would have been one of the top five players in the country. One more for Buka Zundu. Miami's making their free throws tonight. Well, Paul Biancardi, ESPN's national recruiting director, still had Chris Likes at number 45 in his ESPN 100. Mm -hmm. and, and again, with his production, if you say the guys that were in his class, which is a great class that we have seen, but when you put Chris Likes out there alongside Trey Young, Colin Sexton, 
all those guards, when they played against each other, Chris Likes was just as, if not more productive than every one of those guards in the Nike EYBL, including his teammate, Lonnie Walker. Who was a McDonald's All-American. All Chris Likes, from a production standpoint, throughout his entire high school career, was just as productive as any of those guys. The lob of the rim to Azundu. And Miami is just taking this ball game over in the second half. Hawaii's made some mistakes, though. 15 turnovers tonight for the Rainbow Warriors. Yeah, and against this Miami team, especially the way that they defend, you can't continue to give them more and more opportunities on the offensive end of the floor because they're going to do that anyway on the defensive end. Azundu coming up with a huge block. Mutavea had his shot sent back. And now, loose ball. Picked up, Ito Fleischer. They better get a shot off quick. Dreme launches. Too strong. Here comes the U. Jaquan Newton pushes. Newton is fouled. And Drew Bugs. Looks like he got it below the belt there. Newton goes to the free throw line on this one. And I'm not going to call it a bad play. But you've got lights in the one corner. You've got Lonnie Walker trailing you on the other side, and you've got Amp Lawrence ahead. That's one that Newton has to give that basketball up and allow one of his teammates to score an easy two or even get a wide open three in comparison to getting to the free throw line because what happens is that builds trust within a team knowing that when he gets his hands on the basketball in the open court, he's going to make the right play, not necessarily a play for himself. One more for Newton. He has 12 and balanced scoring again from the Canes tonight. 18 point lead for Miami. They're on a 17 to 3 run. And Jaquan Newton going to the hole and not anything, you know, intentional in there, but you jump off your left foot, you leave with your right knee. Carl Malone. Drew Bug speaking a little bit higher right now. Carl Malone used to do it intentionally and it used to hurt. Well, hurt other guys. I got out of the way. <laughs> no, I got out of the way. <laughs> I knew what was going on. <laughs> Mutavea tracks it down. Nice pass by Purchase to a cutting. Avea. When I looked at all the information on Hawaii and I said how is it that Jack Persis who's really not a point forward he's really more of a stretch four how does he lead this team in assists but when you see beautiful passes like that and then of course the behind the back we saw in the first half now you recognize where his true passing skill is in the half court sets and why coach Gannat is so happy when the ball touches his hands Bea spots up for three. Missed everything. Chris Likes lost it. Loose ball picked up by Anthony Lawrence. And a block call against Leland Green. Everything going Miami's way in the second half, but, but Hawaii trying to hang in there. They're going to need more of this, like this pass from Jack Purchase. Well, good things happen when Jack Purchase gets his hands on the basketball, just like this beautiful feed to Avea. However, much more needed from Hawaii. Sixty-seven forty-nine, Miami leading Hawaii at the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. A look at Waikiki Beach, and there's Diamond Head off in the distance. A few days before Christmas in Honolulu, and Miami's taking control of this game. It was 38 all, and since the Canes have just smothered the Rainbow Warriors in trying to improve upon their spot in the rankings. They're one of four remaining unbeaten teams in college basketball, but there's been a little bit of criticism about their schedule in terms of the strength of schedule where it ranks 273rd, but 
I also see Jim Laranaga's point he was making to us yesterday about their schedule. Yeah, and he talked about the fact that, you know, schedules are done so far in advance, and many of the teams that they played this year, and you think about even where they played them, playing at George Washington on December 16th. GW has been traditionally a very good basketball program, but they're down right now. Then you think about Boston University, who are, they're down a little bit right now, but traditionally a very good team. They got a big win at Minnesota. Minnesota was ranked number 12 at the time. They've struggled a bit since then, so that win doesn't look as good now. But he went back to, you know, when he first got to Miami, and they played and lost at Florida Gulf Coast. Well, that was a bad loss to everyone at the time until March before the Gulf Coast goes on to go to the Sweet 16. And that was Andy Enfield who's here coaching USC. You know, so Coach Laranaga was, you know, telling us, you know, just to be wary of making sure that when we talk about the schedule, recognize when it was made and more importantly, it really doesn't matter until you see the finished product when teams get to March. Corner three off the mark from Samuta Avea. And USC in this tournament, one of those games where, Corey, they're preseason top 10. Now they've had some injuries, and they're dealing with some other issues, which many people are, aware, are well aware of in the FBI investigation. DeAnthony Melton, one of their key players, has been held out all season due to that investigation. As Vasilovic missing the run in, the runner. Rebound tipped out to Lawrence. So SC's got a lot of stuff on Andy Enfield's plate that they've been trying to deal with. And DeAnthony Melton, there was a development here the last 24 hours because Melton, who had been held out the first 10 games, had been traveling with USC, but declared ineligible and did not travel here to Honolulu. So the first time that he has had to deal with now not being allowed to be with the team. You know, and Andy Enfield also dealing with a number of injuries as well on the team this season. And, and going back to the scheduling conversation with Jim Laranega, Princeton is one of the teams that Miami has beaten. Well, Princeton gets a huge win against USC. So now that win later probably looks better in March, especially if Princeton goes on to have a very good season in the Ivy League. That win looks much better in March than it does right now, according to the strength of schedule. 16 turnovers for the Rainbow Warriors. And speaking of USC, this game has taken on the same feeling with that USC Akron game, which was our second quarterfinal earlier today. Where Akron led for a long time early in that game as it's out of bounds to Miami. And that game was tied at 38 until USC just ran away from the zips. I was going to say zipped away. He goes, I, I knew I, you I were thinking zipped away from the zips. I wanted to say it's a low-hanging fruit, though. <laughs> but, and they ended up beating him by about 30. As a turnaround jump hook in the lane by Dewan Hewell. And it looks as though Miami is probably going to get a convincing win here, but this is not indicative of the way this game was played in the first half. Foul on Bruce Brown. And it seemed like USC really elevated their play when... Benny Boatwright was given a flagrant two foul late in the first half, and that may have sparked them, and the second half was all Trojans. And that happens often, you know, in basketball, again, it's a brotherhood, you're with your teams, and when you see one of your guys out get ejected pretty much or missing, now you're thinking about, well, we've got to win this for him. We can't allow this thing to slip away, especially, you know, if you got a guy who's going out there playing hard. Not to say that Bo Wright's foul was clean, dirty. I didn't see it, so I can't really speak on that. But I can say that I've been on teams before. He deserved it. <laughs> he did. I was, I was going to let you say it regardless. <laughs> Sharif Dreme by himself. Miami lost him defensively. 17 but, for Jermaine. But, you know, for his USC teammates, I'm sure they're like, wait a minute, you know, guys going out there playing hard, showing some toughness for us. We can't let this one slip through our fingers. And, you know, Jim Laranega accepting the bid to come to this tournament, I'm sure probably thinking that he gets a chance at USC, who's supposed to be on paper a really good team and could still have a very strong year if they're able to get healthy. Offensive foul on Bruce Brown. Well, one semifinal is USC against Middle Tennessee, and the other one, New Mexico State, gets the winner of this one on day two of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines. Hawaii flies with us. Outrigger Hotels and Resorts, Escape Ordinary, and Gildan. For t-shirts and underwear, every thread counts. It's been a fun first day at the ninth annual Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic and earlier today in our first game it went down to the wire between Princeton and Middle Tennessee Sebastian Much with a three to put Princeton ahead but the answer for the Blue Raiders in Middle Tennessee Giddy Potts the winner if you've been watching the NCAA tournament for the last couple of years the name Giddy Potts is familiar in your ears he's been making big shots for Middle Tennessee to Tennessee State the last couple NCAA tournaments. Gibson Johnson for Hawaii. Chris Likes from well behind the line, and Sharif Jermé clears it to the Rainbow Warriors. Leland Green runs the floor, but there was just the presence of Dewan Huell that made him miss the lane. Absolutely. Dewan Huell showing up huge right there without even having to put his arm up. <laughs> the Hawaiian Airlines dive ahead classic brackets of Middle Tennessee and USC. It's on ESPN 2, 430 Eastern in the semis. And then our semifinal, New Mexico State against the winner of this game, coming up at 10 Eastern. Tomorrow night here and in the continental United States, it's later today. Yes. Put so eloquently by you. Is it on in your time though? I mean, yeah. So it's just after midnight Pacific. Time. Okay, gotcha. Five to shoot for Jaquan Newton. Newton. And the putback by Dewan Huell. That's just a grown man rebound right there. Huell going in, getting great position. And there's nothing Gibson Josh was able to do about that. It's just the fact that Dewan Huell is that big, that athletic, to where he can go get rebounds in space where very few people can get. Step back from Leland Green. You know, regardless of the score, I think Hawaii has found some confidence for its guys especially shooting the basketball here in this game and when you can do it against a team that's as good defensively as Miami that gives you confidence that you can do it against anybody and I think that's the silver lining that Aaron Ganak will find with this team is showing them the film and basically showing how they were able to come out and compete on the offensive end of this game Newton tough shot but that's the Quan Newton's game get to the paint Especially with Steptoe guarding him, he has a size advantage where he can just raise over top of a smaller guard, use his strong body, and finish in the paint. Season high 16 for Jaquan Newton. Sharif Tremaine. Gibson Johnson, why not? And the rebound, Newton. Johnson bidding for his first three of the season. The final minute. As Hawaii will use this tournament, plus one more non-conference game to get ready for the Big West. So that answers your question as to why not. <laughs> I would go back to why. <laughs> <laughs> That's a two. And Amp Lawrence hits that one. Amp Lawrence had a big first half. Hasn't had to do much here in the second half. But strong performance in the first half of Amp Lawrence, the leading scorer for Miami going into the break 30 second timeout for subs the annual nba on christmas day tradition continues with four of the best gifts anyone can ask for it noon eastern the sixers and the knicks on espn then at three rematch of the nba finals the Cavs and the dubs 5 30 the wizards take on the celtics the finale the rockets and the thunder at okc all four games are available ESPN app as well. And considering that we'll be working, which game will we have playing on our iPad while, while we're sitting at the table doing the championship game? <laughs> where do I live? <laughs> and where do you live? We're going to have two going. Well, I don't live in any of those cities. You're close enough to D.C. <laughs> since you do a lot of D.C. Wizard stuff anyways. This, this is true. I, I am a Wizards fan. Rock Steptoe. 
Miami shooting 69% in the second half. They got a challenge from Hawaii for about 24 minutes. And they got a response, which I'm sure Jim Laranega is happy about to see his team respond this way in what was a very hostile environment to start this game. So the Canes remain unbeaten. They are now perfect 10. 10 and 0. Four teams in college basketball still undefeated. And number six, Miami is one of them. Led by a season high 16 from Jaquan Newton and also 16 for Dewan Hewell. And they will play New Mexico State in the semis. Middle Tennessee, USC, and the other one, what do you expect tomorrow? I expect two hard fought games from two from four teams that really go about getting the job done on the defensive end of the floor. Corey Alexander, a great ESPN crew. Roxy Bernstein saying aloha and mahalo for joining us from Honolulu. The Canes stay undefeated. They knock off Hawaii.